السلام عليكم انا اسمي علي خير حفوظه كونسلتنت في المجلس ميديسن نشتغل في بريطانيا طبعا انا وجه للدعوه زميل الدفعه دكتور محمد الحراري حاليا في الامارات هو اللي وجه لدعوه للمشاركه في المحاضرات بالنسبه لل طلبة الطب فأنا اخترت اليوم موضوع اللي هو الاندوكراين ايمرجنسي فور ذا ايمرجنسي ميديسن فالموضوع يعني ان شاء الله يعني ان شاء الله نقدر نديرو في خلال ساعة أو أكثر شوية حسب ما يسمح الوقت بالنسبة لكم أنتم وإن شاء الله بعدها نعطيكم شوية فكرة على ال المجلس المدسن هنا في بريطانيا والشن النظام وكيف يعمل الشغل وأي نصائح تانية إن شاء الله نقدر ننصحكم بها بالنسبة لل للإندوكراين نبدأ بالحالة الأولى طبعا البرزنتيشن هي حتكون يعني بطريقة مختلفة الكيس الأول مثلا أو الموضوع اللي بنتكلم عليه الأول مثلا يجيك فيميل بيشنت أراوند ذا إيج أوف 50 أند شي إز أرثريتيك أند سفر من أرثرايتس كومبلينينغ أوف جنراليزد ماليز ويز تشيست بين يعني لما تكون على المونيتر وهذه مثلا الكارديك مونيتر تشوف من الفيتال ساينز اللي موجوده عندك الاي سي جي تلقاها عباره عن ساين ستاك كارديا رننج ات اراوند 124 والاكسجين ساتوريشن 98 which is good بريدنج ات اراوند 12 بيتس بير ريت باي مينيت But you notice the blood pressure is is uh, the is is very low. I mean, uh, you do a chest X-ray, which is normal, and then uh, the full blood count is mild anemia, normocytic and anemia. Um, you give the patient because the blood pressure low. You give her fluid challenge, but you didn't see any change, more or less the same. Uh, physical uh, or the, um, the signs as you can see on the screen. Um, when you inquire further from the patient, uh, she give you the drug history that she is uh, uh, taking corticosteroids and, uh, three years previously. Um, so that gives you a clue to what's going on. So you have given, decided to give her 100 milligram of hydrocortisone IV, and uh, you will see the change in terms of the blood pressure. She was hypotensive, and the heart rate was 124, and now becoming uh, less than 100. Uh, so that, and the patient herself, she will tell you that I'm feeling better by the minute, doc. So that give you, um, this is just, uh, we cannot make, a definite diagnosis at this point. Um, so the A is for adrenals. Um, so talking about Addison disease, which is uh, can be a, a primary and um, most of them like autoimmune disease, 80% of patients. TB uh, makes about 10% of the uh, cases. Uh, also, it can be adrenal hemorrhage which uh, usually be bilateral and could be a tumor or uh, either primary or metastatic, can be caused by uh, HIV disease, uh, HIV and cytomegalovirus. Also the adrenal insufficiency, it can be a, a secondary cause. Um, regarding the Addison disease in the UK, there are about uh, up to 2018, they have about 8,400, 500 uh, cases of Addison disease. Uh, 
Um, the adrenal insufficiency could be secondary due to failure of the um, hypothalamic pituitary axis or isolated SCTH production failure or patient who have stopped taking steroids or patient who are uh, on the, taking ketoconazole or with other medications like phenytoin, rifamycin. There are many other drugs can cause adrenal insufficiency. So when we give this patient 100 milligram of hydrocortisone, you see the difference in terms of blood pressure. And now just give you that clue, it could be just um, a Addison disease. Uh, diagnosis, uh, you can start by giving a uh, random cortisol, measuring random cortisol. Uh, so a random cortisol of 25 microgram per cent or deciliter effectively excludes the insufficiency of any kind. And then there is something called cosine nitrobine test. We'll go further in the following slide about it. But these tests, majority of them, they are not uh, within the A&E for the emergency department, but they are beyond uh, that stage. Uh, but just give you an idea. So the precipitating events are omission of medication as I mentioned, and there's precipitating illnesses, severe infection, myocardial infarction, or if you had patient surgery without adrenal support, also severe trauma, and um, uh, the withdrawal of the steroid therapy in a patient on a long-term steroid therapy, this will cause adrenal atrophy. So that's why you will have a huge dramatic reduction of the, uh, the cortisol and mineral corticoids. The, this is just the uh, slide on showing you the relation between the pituitary and the adrenal cortex. So the hypothalamus will release the corticotrophin, um, which will go into the pituitary or anterior pituitary. The anterior pituitary will release the ACTH, and uh, the ACTH will work on the adrenal cortex to reduce the cortisol. Um, so the clinical presentation of this uh, Addison's disease, they present with nausea and vomiting. They present with unexplained fever, so you will not find source of infection. Also, they present with unexplained hypoglycemia. Also, they are uh, hyponatremic and hyperkalemic. And also, they're complaining of abdominal pain, dehydration, because of their losing uh, fluids from the vomiting. And also, they are hypotensive or uh, in shock. Uh, so, give you say the systemic effects of the cortisol. We have two extremes: either the excess, which will give you the cushions, uh, signs and feature, which are weight gain, hypertension, or type two diabetes, low potassium, and or hypokalemic bruising of the skin, myobodies, and say causes. But the lack of the cortisol or the Addison's, they are coming with weight loss, low blood pressure or shock, glucose or hypoglycemic, hyperkalemic, and they present in a, as I said, collapsed state, also uh, with the skin and mucosal pigmentation, if it's the adrenal cause. Pigmentation in the Addison's disease due to the ACTH, uh, release and uh, that will produce or affect the melanocytes and that's why it will cause some deposition of the uh, melanin in the skin and the mucous membrane. The Addison crisis is a life-threatening emergency triggered by anything that increases the person's normal stress level. Uh, and as I mentioned earlier on, you will find the patient have unexplained hyponatremia, hyperkalemia in the setting of hypotension or with hypotension, and this all unresponsive to catecholamines and fluids. Hence that we give this patient uh, the uh, hydrocortisone. Um, the investigation uh, will include you, your electrolytes, blood glucose, and as I said, usually they are hypoglycemic. You will find they have 
eosinophilia and lymphocytosis, the random cortisol level, as we mentioned earlier, and also there is the ACTH stimulation test, which is the, uh, we'll talk about it in, 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 in the next slide or so. Um, also, the adrenal antibodies, because we mentioned it is mainly uh, autoimmune disease. And to produce a crisis or shutdown of the adrenal, uh, you need to uh, nearly destroy 90% of the adrenals, and usually both glands will be affected in the, in the adrenal crisis, either by, as we, as we mentioned in the previous slides. Also, we, uh, you can do CT abdomen, which uh, might show if this patient has some TB, it might show some calcification or some enlargement of the, um, the uh, renals, uh, or um, uh, if there is a tumor in that areas. Also, um, as a part of the investigation, you need to do the pituitary function test and also the MRI of the pituitary to see whether the cause of the uh, adrenal insufficiency is it uh, se secondary uh, as a secondary cause. The hyponatremia and the hyperkalemia, just be aware of the hyponatremia might be obscured by uh, dehydration and the random cortisol is not helpful if unless it is very very low or less than five uh, milligram per liter uh, during the uh, period of great stress. As I mentioned earlier, the ACTH stimulation test or the cosine tropine, it has two tests, short and long. The short, which uh, compares the cortisol level before and after uh, a dose of 250 microgram of tetracosactide. And if this give you a normal, uh, results, you need to go to the long test. The long test, which also uh, involves a one milligram of uh, tetracosactide, uh, which is a large dose administered, and uh, you take blood would be taken at one first hour and after four hours, after eight and 24 hours later. The basal ACTH will be raised in primary adrenal insufficiency, but not in the secondary. Um, because the, um, if, it's, if the primary cause is in the adrenal, then the pituitary will start or will produce a lot of ACTH in uh, attempt to stimulate the adrenal to produce, but that uh, failing. CT of the abdomen acid will reveal enlargement of the adrenal in patients with adrenal hemorrhage or active TB or metastatic malignancy, and also you, you can see some uh, get some calcifications. The management of acute adrenal insufficiency, or in general, any uh, uh, here in the UK and, and different other parts of the uh, world, management, uh, especially in the UK, they are always, always. Uh, you, you need to start with the ABCs uh, of management, which is the airway and the oxygenation, breathing and ventilation and circulation, uh, you know, support and circulation um, parameters. And then the um, hydrocortisone, um, when you, you give the uh, 100 milligram stat, and then you give them 50 milligram, four hourly for 24 hours, and then this tapered over uh, like the next three uh, days or 72 hours. But when the oral feed is tolerated, then you go to oral replacement and overlap usually the first oral and last IV doses and uh, correct hypoglycemia, correct hyponatremia and the hyperkalemia and hypercalcemia as well, they are some patients, they are hypercalcemic. So aggressive volume replacement with dextrose 5% in, in, normal, uh, in normal saline. So fluids and hydrocodone are, the, are the, uh, the most important things in addition to the correction of the electrolytes 
particularly the potassium because the hyperkalemia it has uh, its drawback effects on the heart in particular. And the patient with primary adrenal insufficiency may require mineral corticoids as a long term when shifted to oral therapy. And also treat, treat the precipitating disease or causes, uh, whatever uh, if uh, treatable causes. And these are just some slides and images of the pigmentation, which you can see on the inside of the mouth and the mucous membranes on the lips. And um, also you can see them in the palmar creases of the hand. Normally we don't have this pigmentation in the hand. This is another image of uh, some pigmentation on the uh, inside of the mouth. And even on this outside of the skin, this picture is not very clear, but it's a little bit blurry. Also, this is another image of some pigmentation on the skin, uh, on the mucous membrane. This is another uh, hand pigmentation, palmar uh, uh, areas. So this is what about the adrenal uh, insufficiency and um, uh, Addisonian crisis. Now we move on to a storm. I mean, this picture just representing like a storm with uh, ship underneath the storm. So this is some like a ship in 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 a trouble. So I'm talking about now or referring to the thyroid storm. So this is like the protrusions or exophthalmos of the eyes. You can see them in some patients. Uh, with this, uh, with the thyroid causes or Graves' disease. It's another picture. So the storm they present with tachycardia, as you can see on the uh, monitor there, uh, the hypertension, 230 over 98. They present with pyrexia. Also, they present with altered level of consciousness. So the storm is a, is a hypermetabolic state. The beta adrenergic drive, which will cause the palpitation, cause chest pain, and make the patient breathless. Also, um, there's increase of 15% uh, of body uh, weight loss, more than 15%. If the storm is not treated, it can be fatal. So the storm abatement or uh, reduction or uh, treatment involves like four uh, um, lines, which is we need to block the production of the thyroid hormones, talking about T3 and T4, and also we need to uh, address the peripheral effects and also the pyrolysis. Uh, which is these patients are having a, a high temperature and also treat the precipitating causes. So to block the uh, thyroid production, provide thyroid 200 to 400 milligram per hourly, uh, in addition to hydrocortisone, because uh, some patients with the thyroid, they are uh, having adrenal insufficiency, so they need to have hydro 100 milligram six hourly. Uh, the addressing the barrier effects, which is like the the uh, sympathetic outflow. So they need to have the pronanone 20 to 40 milligram for hourly to minimize the symptomatic symptoms. The pyrolysis here you need to uh, reduce the temperature, but avoid the salicylate or the aspirin. The reason why I will tell you in the next slide, and also the, the precipitant factors, uh, which is the commonest is sepsis or infection. And this is the treatment of the root storm. So the triangle of treatments, as we mentioned, sympathetic outflow reduction, also a reduction of the uh, production of the uh, release of the thyroid hormone, and also we need to reduce the peripheral conversion of T4 and T3. Uh, regarding the um, 
aspirin or salicylate because it's uh, has like it competes with the um, thyroglobulin uh, proteins so it will um, um, push or release more uh, you know t3 uh, uh, and t4 from in, in, the, in the serum that's why you don't want to, to have this to, uh, to happen so to give them antibiotic just um, you just paracetamol uh, intravenously. So regarding the care in a &E, uh, so don't delay treatments once you suspect a storm. So you need to get patient oxygen and cardiac monitoring. And the, as we mentioned about the antibiotic, aggressive rehydration and the electrolyte replacement. Uh, and also the antithyroid, uh, as we mentioned earlier on, provide thyrosyl, which uh, has effects of, opposes the synthesis of T4 and also inhibits its conversion to T3. Now, moving on to the next uh, condition, it is that, or what is called um, the common, uh, like uh, uh, symptoms or, common uh, complaint, tired all the time. So this is, we're talking about the myxedema, and these are the facial uh, or the faces of myxedematous patient, puffy edematous, and loss of hair, um, thick skin. Another uh, image also like, um, like a masked uh, face appearance, like a depression-like. So it's common in the elderly females, the complaints of abdominal cramps, constipation, fecal impaction, and also hypothermia because of the uh, hypothyroid uh, status. Uh, it is subclinical, uh, can be subclinical, so normal, you'll find them a normal T4, and raise the TCH because the TCH comes from the pituitary and it's uh, trying to uh, you know, stimulate the um, uh, thyroid to produce the thyroid hormone. Um, and this is 8% of patients are females and three are males. As you mentioned, it is also autoimmune or it can be iatrogenic after surgery, especially the thyroid, total thyroid uh, dictomies, or uh, the iodine uh, therapy. And uh, also it can be uh, due to drugs, sedatives, narcotics, or potent diuretics. Uh, it is rare. I mean, there are only 300 cases described in the literature. Um, the precipitant factors, infection, especially pneumonia and UTI, uh, surgery, as you mentioned, uh, can happen in uh, patients with the stroke, uh, drugs, in particular amidarone, beta blocker, diuretics, and um, hypothermia and burn, um, also GIT hemorrhage, can cause uh, the mixed coma. The mortality, it can be up to 80%. The mixed coma can be associated with adrenal insufficiency, and this patient they present with uh, diminished ventilatory drive. Also, they can present with some effusion, either pericardial or uh, pleural. Uh, myocardial infarction can be a cause or effect. So ideally, the mixed demand coma patient or coma in general should be admitted to ITU because of the ventilation may be necessary. Fluids and uh, electrolytes correction. Um, the myocardial infarction must be ruled out and blood pressure uh, need to be stabilized. If considered treat, um, I mean, if you consider the mixed coma treated, so 
regarding the controversy, whether you give them T4 or T3, mostly uh, nowadays they're using T4, which is a levothyroxine, um, also, also the hydrocortisone, as we mentioned, until adrenal insufficiency has uh, ruled out. Treat hypothermia with passive rewarming. Uh, so they don't recommend using uh, warming uh, or uh, active rewarming because that will reduce uh, peripheral vasodilatation and will uh, lead to uh, you know, low blood pressure and uh, worsening the conditions. Treating the hyponatremia and also they recommend uh, broad spectrum anti uh, antibiotics because infection is often the cause. And now we move on to the uh, following subject or following conditions. It's the hypoglycemia. I will not talk about it too much here. Hypoglycemia in treated diabetic. The laboratory glucose uh, carries the, you know, medical legal uh, um, issues here. So um, it's not you know, just like the um, uh, BMs or the finger bricks. Um, so basically you need to give this patient um, uh, carbohydrates, oral if they are uh, conscious and they are able to take orally. Uh, or give them IV dextrose. Usually you give them the 15 to 20 uh, grams of 50% dextrose, which is really very thick to give uh, because it looks like effectively like, like a honey in a syringe. And also IM glucagon. So, uh, majority of these patients, sometimes before they arrive to the hospital, the paramedics or the pre-hospital ambulance they usually give them the glucagon, uh, and sometimes we need to give it further in the in the department. Um, the uh, slowly absorbed carbohydrate has to be given, and also we need to investigate the cause of why this patient uh, is diabetic and runs into hypoglycemia. Is it because of increasing the taking amount of insulin or? Uh, infections or what's uh, going on and that needs to once the patient admitted in the uh, hospital uh, this investigation will be carried out and as I said inform the diabetic team uh, hypoglycemia and non-diabetic more or less the same so before treatment so you need to check plasma glucose cortisol insulin and CVV type and the sample for the glucose is the fluoride, uh, fluoride oxalate sample, which is collect, a clotted sample. And um, you need to inform the lab about it if you need the uh, assay of the insulin and the CVP type, uh, if the glucose is less than two millimole, which is severe hypoglycemia. As I said, treatment is the same like the uh, Asbert diabetic hypo. And also inform the endocrine consultant or diabetic team. The following condition, um, diabetic ketoacidosis. It can be the first presentation and about one in 10 patients with DKA, um, and it's in, 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 in non-diabetic. And usually you will see uh, at least one patient of DKA a week, because the number of diabetic patients, I think globally is, 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 is very high. Uh, criteria for diagnosis of DKA, patients satisfies all of the below. Hyperglycemia, more than 11 millimole per liter. Metabolic acidosis, pH um, less than uh, 7.3. Um, bicarbonate, less than 18 millimole. High anion gap, uh, 
uh, and also presence of ketonemia, more than five millimol per liter, presence of ketonuria, more than two millimol. DKA, potentially fatal, and it accounts uh, for 14% of all hospital admissions uh, of diabetics. Usually, as I said, we see at least one per week. Uh, the principal, principles are similar in adults and children, but I think we will just concentrate on adults now. So DKA, in short, it is famine in the face of plenty. Uh, which means, you know, majaa fi wajh al wafra or al katra. So the biochemistry, I think this is the joy and um, the pathogenesis of DKA. Uh, it's either absolute or relative insulin deficiency plus minus increased counter regulatory and catabolic. Uh, hormones because insulin is in one hand and the other hormones in, in, in our body uh, are uh, on the other hand. So disposal of glucose and ketone bodies with the balance of hepatic production of glucose and ketone bodies. Um, and this is my favorite slide, although it's old slide, but it's really uh, very good. And this will give you an insight, understanding of, you know, glucose metabolism and insulin. So the center of the picture here is the glucose. So when um, the when you have the insulin deficiency, so the liver will try to produce more glucose. The glucose will cause osmotic diuresis in the uh, circulation, and that will lead to volume depletion and dehydration. Also, the uh, the, the liver will um, and the, we get the liver and the adipose tissues and the muscles. Um, the liver will uh, convert glucose uh, and um, will. Um, through the, you know, from the glucose, uh, produce glucose from glycogen and from the gluconeogenesis. Um, the adipose tissues, triglyceride will break down into glycerol and free fatty acids. The glycerol will go to the liver and that will contribute to gluconeogenesis. The free fatty acids go into two ways. Some of the fatty acids will go to the liver and that will uh, convert to ketones, ketone will be released in the circulation. Free fatty acids will convert to the prostaglandin 1 or I2 and prostaglandin E2. These prostaglandin, they will decrease the vascular resistance, so that will cause vasodilatation. They are the cause of the nausea and the vomiting and the pain. Prostaglandins are the cause of the abdominal pain. Ketones also the muscles break down the proteins into amino acids, and then ketones will come and join the ketone circulation. Ketones will cause this metabolic acidosis. So you have the metabolic acidosis, you have the hyperglycemia, and you have the uh, volume depletion and the other symptoms. So physiology is understanding physiology is the most important in terms of treatment. When you understand this slide, it's very important uh, how you deal with this patient or any, any, any other uh, conditions. So the glucose, uh, insulin deficiency, and increased uh, catabolic hormones. So increased high hepatic glycogenolysis and gluconeogenesis, and decreased glucose disposal uh, by peripheral tissues or the use of glucose by the verification because they cannot use the uh, glucose. Uh, the insulin effects in ketoacidosis, or normally the insulin it has, uh, the, it will increase the glucose up, uptake, increase the glucose storage, and triglyceride incorporation into the fat cells. But when this is absent, you will get the reverse. 
glucagon effects. It will increase hepatic glycogen lysis and also increase the liver gluconeogenesis, triglyceride breakdown, release of free fatty acids, and mitochondrial free fatty acids oxidation to ketone bodies. So insulin versus glucagon in imbalance. Precipitant causes or factors, sepsis, especially pneumonia and, U and UTI, it's constitute about 40% of ketoacidosis. Omission of insulin uh, or patients who are not compliant or undertreated. Many patients, especially young, they come to our department and they are not bothered to take the insulin and they don't want to you know, carry on because they're fed up from this daily injections. Uh, and that uh, constitutes about 25%. As I said, uh, it is about 15%. It will be as a first presentation of diabetes mellitus. Other causes, which is about 20%, myocardial infarction, stroke, pancreatitis, trauma, thyroid, diuretics, and steroids. The clinical finding, they are bolioric, bolidipsia, and nausea, vomiting, and abdominal pain, decreased uh, conscious level, and they are hyperventilating and cosmal respiration or a smell of the respiration. Uh, clinically dry, typically free uh, water loss. They can lose up to like six liters. Um, shock, they can be presenting shock. And smells of ketones, I mentioned the uh, cosmal respiration. Signs of infection, you will find, you know, raised CRP or um, high temperature or other signs of infection or some. Uh, if you find any chest X-ray, you can find some changes or urine analysis might show you some signs of infection. Um, the also um, weight loss as we mentioned regarding bolioria, bolidipsia, and they are lethargic, um, dehydrated, uh, hypotensive, uh, with tachycardia, and acidotic, uh, and this will lead to hyperventilation and uh, cosmal respiration. I think this is just another repeat of another, the same slide. And also the acidosis, will cause the peripheral vasodilatation, cause the hypotension. And also uh, they are drowsy, can go into coma. And uh, non-specific, uh, which is abdominal pain, leg cramps. So the key points in DKA, DKA should ideally be managed in HDU or ITU. Fluid replacement should take place over 24 to 48 hours rather than 12 hours. Uh, the stat dose of insulin at initiation of treatment should be avoided. Uh, nowadays, most of the hospitals uh, in our, the emergency department, they carry or they have their pathways, uh, which you find it uh, in your department and that just follow the guidelines and the pathways. Um, the hypokalemia should be avoided by adequate potassium replacement throughout the treatment period. And hypoglycemia is a life threatening and it's preventable. The Glasgow Coma score and oxygen saturation should be closely observed. So, the key investigations check the capillary uh, glucose but always send the venous sample, as I mentioned earlier on, because of the medical legal point, uh, and check hourly when insulin, uh, when the uh, patient on insulin infusion, check your electrolytes hourly, uh, you're looking for the hyperkalemia, hypokalemia are common cause of death in patients with DKA, arterial blood uh, need as um, not needed as a routine, you can send the venous uh, um, gas or venous blood gas. 
ACG uh, is important, and also blood cultures, uh, urine cultures, uh, chest X-ray, full blood count, which is a, leucos uh, a leukocytosis common, but that doesn't need that be, to be given antibiotics uh, on the, on this on this basis only alone, and be aware of pseudo hyponatremia. So the main lines of treatment, replenish water, replenish sodium, and replenish potassium, and uh, metabolize glucose by giving the uh, insulin. So recommended fluid resuscitation in DKA, 0.9 uh, uh, saline, 500 ml per hour uh, for the first four hours. First hour, I mean, uh, also a normal saline plus 40 millimole potassium chloride uh, at 50 ml, 500 ml per hour for five hours, and also normal saline 400 millimole uh, potassium chloride 300 at 300 ml per hour for 10 hours. So, I mean, as I mentioned earlier on. Each hospital and or each uh, trust or each department, they have their own pathways. So you need to look at your uh, local hospital and what are the guidelines and the pathways or the fluid regimes and treatments in DKA. Insulin, we need usually soluble insulin or extrabid, and that should be infused at a fixed rate, usually 0.1 unit per kilogram until normalization of the pH. Aim to drop the glucose by no more than five millimole per hour. The potassium hypokalemia can cause death. Insulin uh, rising um, when uh, the pH will improve, so that will push the potassium into the cells because no, as we know, or, and as you know, potassium is an intracellular uh, electrolyte. So, organic potassium, if the potassium level is six millimole per liter, you don't need to give any potassium. If it's between 3.5 to 6, give them 20 millimole per liter. If it's less than 3.5, then they need uh, doubling the dose of the potassium chloride. Now, after the DKA, we need to talk about uh, the hyper-smaller um, or non-ketotic hyperglycemic hyper-smaller state. These patients, they have some insulin, so the, uh, that will do some lipolysis protection. And usually it's insidious because uh, there is greater water deficit and altered cognition, 20% uh, of these patients, they are in coma. And this, it happens in type two diabetes, characterized by marked hyperglycemia, often more than 50 millimole per liter. They, they are dehydrated, uh, raised osmolality, more than 350. And the osmolality is usually calculated by two times sodium plus potassium plus urea plus glucose. Um, and they have no significant acidosis or ketosis. And it carries a high mortality. And also because of its the hyperosmolar status, they, it, it is a high risk of thrombosis because of the sluggish circulation. And usually occurs in the middle aged or elderly patient with type two diabetes. And often uh, previously undiagnosed diabetes. And as we mentioned earlier on, no ketosis because of the residual indigenous insulin in type two diabetes. It's precipitated by infection, diuretics, 
glucose drinks to quench thirst. The treatment, so they need uh, fluid replenish uh, or fluid deficit to be replenished carefully. Treat the underlying cause. Um, and regarding the fluid, if you don't treat them carefully, it can be, uh, they can be overhydrated and can be the cause of uh, mortality. The deficit, you usually give like 150 mils per kilogram, half in the first 12 hours and, and the rest over 24 hours. The insulin infusion might not be needed because they have a little bit of insulin. A um, few slides on, or one or two slides on the lactic acidosis. It's a very, very rare complication of met metformin therapy. Um, about three to nine cases per 100,000 patients a year. Um, more likely if there's a renal causes um, or cardiac or hepatic failure. Metformin contraindication or contraindicated if creatinine more than 130. Um, it um, contrast induced nephropathy. Um, treatment involved stopping metformin aggressive bicarbonate therapy, and possible dialysis, some patients that might need dialysis. The following uh, condition is the hypocalcemia. The total serum calcium is two, less than 2.2 uh, millimol per liter, or serum ionized calcium, uh, which is the active calcium, is uh, 1.2 millimol. Cause of the uh, acute hypocalcemia, uh, hypoparathyroidism or post-thyroidectomy. It can happen within the, I mean, within the usually first few hours or within the first 24 hours um, of surgery or total thyroidectomies because these adrenals uh, um, sometimes, uh, because they are affected with the manipulation and movement, sometimes the surgeons, if they don't uh, leave one or two parathyroid glands uh, at the area of surgery, then these patients they go into the hypocalcemia. Vitamin D deficiency in rickets and osteomalacia, uh, chronic kidney disease, uh, which will increase the phosphate level. Drugs like calcitonin and bisphosphonates. Others uh, causes like acute pancreatitis is a common cause of uh, hypocalcemia. Celiac because of the malabsorption. Uh, chronic liver disease. Symptoms, uh, these patients are present with perioral numbness, tingling, paresthesia, muscle cramps, carbon, fetal spasm, and sometimes seizures. The signs are hyperreflexic conditions, schwastic signs, or schwastic sign and trosio sign. They are hypotensive, uh, bradycardia, and prolonged QT interval on ECG and other types of arrhythmia. Um, regarding the ECG and hypocalcemia, so the normal uh, QT interval is 0.36, but the hypocalcemia is prolonged 0.480%. So the QT is from the beginning of the Q wave until the end of the T wave. So it's first sign tapping on the masseter muscle on the side of the face that will cause the contraction of the facial muscles. The this is the uh, trouser sign when you inflate the um, blood pressure cuff on the arm uh, for a few minutes, you can see the fingers and the, the, the hand going to um, 
like a carbon spasm, as you can see in the picture. So the biochemical workup, serum total calcium and albumin and ionized calcium need to be measured, the serum phosphate, usually the magnesium low in this patient, um, the plasma parathyroid hormone low in uh, hypoparathyroidism and high in hungry bone syndrome. Um, also the uh, vitamin D and the 25 uh, or the 125 the vitamin D3, the serum amylase and lipase measurement because of the, as we mentioned, regarding amylase pancreatitis and the lipase is more sensitive uh, test for the pancreatitis, but the MLAs, uh, not many hospital perform this one. I think it's because of the expense. Um, treatment of the hypocalcemia, correct uh, low magnesium, and um, calcium, give calcium gluconate 10 ml of 10% solution, um, obviously with the ICG monitoring, so this will be given at over five to 10 minutes and repeat as necessary in case uh, with frank generalized tetany. Uh, slower continuous infusion of calcium gluconate in less acute cases. And as we mentioned, continuous cardiac monitoring for bradycardia. Now the second or the other condition is the acute hypercalcemia. Uh, most common causes are endocrine, like hyperparathyroidism, uh, multiple endocrine neoplasia, uh, parathyroid uh, hormone um, uh, invaded by solid tumors, uh, can be neoblastic cancers with bone metastasis, myeloma, multiple myeloma. Um, uh, CA lung or bronchogenic carcinoma, breast, renal, and uh, lymphoma. Other causes are granulomatous disease like TB and sarcoidosis. The clinical features, they all say it's called or they named bone stones, groans, and psychic moans. So these patients present with the polyuria and polydipsia. Um, dehydration, bone pain, confusion, anorexia, abdominal pain, and nausea and vomiting, constipation, and renal stones. The hypercalcemia ECG is also the normal QT is 0.36. But in the hypercalcemia, it is shortened, so it's 0 0.26. You see the difference if you see that one before and compare this one with the previous slide. So the workup serum calcium in hypercalcemia is high. So um, the parathyroid hormone. High, this means that it's primary hyperparathyroidism. Uh, if the parathyroid hormone low, this is probably malignancy or other causes. The serum calcium, if serum calcium more than three, uh, it's 90% of the time is uh, malignant origin. Treatment of hypercalcemia, volume repletion, uh, and the uresis. So give to sodium chloride um, four liters in the first hour. And loop diuretics, uh, frosamide, especially has a calciuretic effect. And um, also calcitonin. The zoledronic acid, uh, IV, uh, four milligrams over 15, 15 minutes. And also the bisphosphonates will be effective by second to the fourth day. Uh, also hemodialysis 
uh, need to be considered if the above are not effective. The corticosteroids, um, prednisolone 30 to 60 milligram daily, they are the drug, is, it's the drug of choice in uh, if granulomatous disease or vitamin A or D intoxication is the cause. And this is a picture of the glandular problems. Okay. Thank you very much. Any questions? Barakallahu fiik, Dr. Shukran Haba. Dr. Muhammad Rajih. Sweeney. محمد سويني نحاول منه نعم نعم في الموست اكيوريت انفستيجيشن شنو التحليل اللي نطلبوه بحيث ان نقول له ان الكيس اللي قدامنا ده. هذا بالنسبه للسؤال الاول بالنسبه للسؤال الثاني في الحالة المكسوديم المكسوديم كوما شنو شنو كنت تقصد حضرتك بالباسف ريورمينج الباسف ريورمينج اها اوكي اوكي ثالث كويشن ثالث كويشن اتس ابوت ديابيتيك فود ديابيت فوت الفرست بروسيجر اللي 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 ممكن نديروه الفرست بروسيجر ديابيت فوت ديابيت فوت يس احنا ما ما تكلمناش عليها ديابيت فوت لكن على كل حال التات هذه اللي هي التايرد اوف ذا تايم ذا ورك اب اللي هو طبعا انت ب يو نيد تو انفستيجيت فور ذا لوك ات ديليفريز اوف ذا T3 and T4 and the follicular stimulating hormones and also starting with the basic like by the from the history itself of the patient you know the symptoms and the or whether they have any any goiters or any other 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 conditions related to the thyroid gland facial features and also the uh, clinical symptoms of the patients you know they are depressed and then you can see the Uh, you might get some uh, mixed edema on the skin of the legs and the facial um, skin and hair loss. But the work of the biochemistry is the main things to rely on is the level of the uh, thyroid hormones or the thyroid function test in general. Because if the patient is not uh, producing T3 and T4 or they have very low uh, amounts, then they will have a very high follicular stimulating hormone because this is uh, an attempt from the pituitary to squeeze the thyroid gland to produce the T3 and T4. Regarding the soal ktani bilisba lil myxedema coma. Rewarming, passive rewarming. Passive rewarming al maqsoud bih anna yani you don't put them like the electric blanket or the the The, what's called the, the bear hug blanket because uh, you need to just give them a, uh, put them with a normal blanket uh, that will help uh, rewarming them slowly because you know um, if they are uh, having uh, somebody has a high temperature that's the idea because if you rewarm them quickly you will cause a generalized buzz dilatation and that will worse in the condition so you will lose the uh, gradually the gradually uh, gradually uh, rewarming no, I mean, control no, it just just a normal blanket that that will more warm oh. them up. but don't use these uh, you know electrically operated or the uh, what's called this we'll call them the bear hugs blankets we have them here in the, in the uk um, i don't know what's about the libya down there what sort of worsening the case no Worsening 
worsening, worsening the case. Otherwise, uh, yeah, yeah, we, uh, yeah, we it, use it, uh, electric it worse, or blanket or something yeah. like that. So we need to warm them yep. slowly. That's, that's what we mean okay. by passive rewarming. Yeah. 